Alrighty all, welcome to astronomy. Today we're taking a look at your first lecture, which is about the motion of the celestial sphere. And part of the tricky part of this lecture was trying to visualize uh, the sphere, which is obviously in 3D, in a 2D, on a 2D paper. So uh, just to help out, I have above and below the horizon here, just to try to visualize right, what's going on in this sphere. And then we can try to project it onto our 2D paper. All right. Uh, so the first thing that we want to do whenever we're thinking about the celestial sphere, wherever we are, we have to try to place our uh, Polaris, right? So we're going to start in Syracuse. So for us, Polaris is going to be, I mean, Polaris is always in the, in the north, but where it's going to be about halfway up our sky. So right about there, right? Halfway between high and low in the sky. And we can kind of see that it looks similar to our 2D projections where we have the rings and then it's about halfway between them, right? So now what I'm gonna do, we're gonna start with a star that at midnight is just above the northern horizon, right? This is what we started with in lecture, right? So our northern horizon is the rim of the bowl, or the horizon is the rim of the bowl, our northern horizon's right over here, right? So just above it, all right, we can see that's kind of just above our northern horizon. Because the way we need to visualize this is we're looking up into this bowl, all right? So here's our northern horizon. If we go just above it, then again, look the way we'd represent it 2D, super close to the edge of our circle, all right, and in the north. And what we're going to visualize here is its rotation around Polaris. All right, so I'm going to stare directly at Polaris about there and try to draw as clean a circle as I, as I can around Polaris, right? So if I can... Circles are gonna be pretty rough, but here you go, right? Well, maybe round that side out a little more, right? <laughs> that looks like a pretty, if I'm looking at Polaris as my center, that's a that's a circle around it, right? And it's going counterclockwise, of course, right? But then if I project it onto 2D, right, we can see it kind of warps into this almost like ellipse type shape where it just bends a little bit. This is where we're getting into representing it in two dimensions, right? This is gonna be like a projection of it. We're just gonna take this and draw it as if it was flat, right? We said this was here at midnight. So it's gonna be at its highest point over here, right? That's highest in our dome or lowest in our bowl if I'm holding it like I'm eating cereal out of it, right? So if we said this was midnight, we know that it's going to take 24 hours to get all the way around Polaris, right? Because that's how long it takes the Earth to rotate. So if it takes 24 hours to get all the way around, over here it would take 12 hours to get halfway around. So if this is midnight, this is noon. And then we can divide it even further and just say halfway between them is going to be 6 a.m. and 6 p.m., and we can keep subdividing it, right? This would be like uh, 9 p.m., here's 3 p.m., et cetera. But that's how you figure out what time it is, or not what time it is, but what time, where the star would be at a given time, all right? Let's start talking about some more stars. Let's how to erase this mess of a circle first. These are actually my roommate's bowls that she uses for like, actually cooking and things. So uh, I'm sorry, I promise I'll wash them. It'll be all right, <laughs> right? Oh, we lost a bit of yeast here too, all right? I have my cardinal directions so we can read them. All right, so the next thing we're gonna look at is a star that doesn't just stay above the horizon, right? The last one, we could see the full circle. It's not gonna go below our horizon. So this time, we're gonna pick a star that at midnight is high in the southern sky, right? So if we're looking up, it's gonna be very deep in the bowl, kind of towards right about there. That's where we're at at midnight. And again, just like that, you can see, if I go like this, you can see it's lower in the bowl, but in our 2D projection, it just looks like it's on one of the inner circles, right? So now we're gonna draw its path. Right, it's still going around Polaris, but if I look straight at Polaris like that, 
and kind of try to draw myself a circle, I'm gonna end up off my bowl. All right, that's a pretty close to a nice circle there. But if I go, again, if I go flat, you can see it's just this kind of curve, right? Where it, and we know that it, again, is going this counterclockwise, where it's gonna rise in the east, set in the west, right? So here's our 2D projection. If I brought out, right, this kind of paper, it would project just kind of along like that. Well, now we have to think about what is happening below the horizon, right? So I'm gonna complete our celestial sphere with our below the horizon here. Right? I hope we can still see. Um, and I'm still gonna look straight at Polaris, or as straight at as Polaris as I can, and try to finish, I'm gonna follow the circle the rest of the way around. So this is, <laughs> this is tricky. All right, I'm gonna kind of follow it around like this. All right, and now we're right, like east is up here and south is over here. Oh, north is over here, my bad. North is on this side, mixing, my, mixing up my directions. And then west is down here, All right? I can kind of see I have a full circle around Polaris right now. But when I pull this up, I have my 2D projection. Oh, that's really hard to see. All right, if I look like this, I can kind of see it curving around here. All right, so this 2D projection, that's gonna just kind of curve this way. That's gonna be what we see in our southern sky, kind of curving up like this, right? Because it goes from west to east when we're below the horizon because it sets here and it's gonna go here, all right? All right, so we've talked about things that stay above the horizon. We've talked about staying below the horizon. Now let's start moving around the planet. We've uh, exhausted a lot of what we can see in Syracuse. It's really only our two options, whether or not it stays above the horizon, yes or no. Uh, so now let's start moving around the globe and figuring out how things are gonna look at different, in different parts of the world, right? So we're all done with Syracuse, so I'm gonna get rid of our Polaris there at that point in the sky. And now, first thing that we did in lecture was we talked about uh, whatever the place in Finland, and then also near the equator, right? So we had one that was super, super, super north, and one that was kind of uh, uh, on the equator, right? So Polaris is always gonna be along our northern direction, but it's gonna be different places on that northern direction, right? So when we're super close to the North Pole, it's gonna get higher and higher in the sky, right? So I can have, we'll put it right about here. That'll be my North Star near the North Pole, right? At the North Pole, it would be at the zenith, but we're not quite there yet, right? So now we're talking about near our North Pole, we had a star that was pretty close to our, uh, our uh, Polaris, right? So this one looks a lot like a circle because it's pretty close to the zenith or, well, right? So, I draw my path, it's going counterclockwise again, as always. Ooh, I'm gonna try to rotate this little, yeah, there you go. There, there's our 2D projection. It just kind of looks like a circle because it's close to, the top of the, close to the top of our dome, close to the top of our uh, sphere. So it's not gonna get warped too much, right? Like the last one, when it was really big and we tried to project it down, it just kind of looked like a couple of circles or a couple of uh, curved lines, right? So there we have it in Finland. Now, when we're near the equator, our Polaris is gonna be super duper close to our horizon, 
all right? So if I look kind of straight at Polaris here, a star that's really close to it, we're only gonna get half of that circle on this side before it goes below the horizon. So what we can do is we take our below the horizon again, and if I can kind of eyeball this and see, right? It only comes up just a little bit below the horizon. Right, remember, I'm holding it like this so I can draw it easily. It's really gonna be like this, right? So here's our below the horizon, and it, with a 2D projection, it doesn't really come very far like that because it's essentially going just straight up and down on this celestial sphere, okay? So that's what we have near the equator and also not near the equator, okay? But near the equator, right, the north celestial pole might be super close to the horizon on this side. So that means that our south celestial pole, if I have the north celestial pole just above the horizon, I could have the south celestial pole just below the horizon over here towards the south, All right? Because if I go any further south, they're gonna switch. And then I could only see my south celestial pole because I'm in the southern hemisphere and I can no longer see Polaris that we can see in the northern hemisphere, All right? All right, the next thing we did was we looked at the sun, which was very similar to what we did before, All right? We're gonna do our same, same thing. We're going back to Syracuse. And I'm gonna redraw north, because we're losing north. All right, we're going back to Syracuse, so I'm gonna redraw Polaris about halfway up in the sky. And we can see how it projects in 2D. And the sun, we know it rises in the east and sets in the west, but now we can decide whether it goes into the northern or southern sky by looking. We can look straight at Polaris, right? And if we're going like here-ish, right? Look like that. And kind of try to draw just angling it towards me so I can draw it a little better. Draw a circle where you can see I'm looking straight at Polaris. That looks pretty rounded, like almost like it's a circle going around Polaris there. Maybe it could round a little bit more this way. I like that or something, right? It's like a clean circle, but then again, when we look at it to project into 2D, it gets into this like kind of warped and oblong, weird archway kind of thing. And we can see it goes into the southern sky, right? Because again, it's going counterclockwise around Polaris. So it's just like that. And again, if we looked towards our below the hemisphere now, below the hemisphere, below the horizon, right? I'm gonna just follow my circle again here. You can see my circle's kind of complete. Can't really see it through the back of this, but all right, we can see that's kind of, ooh, that's not a bad circle, right? You can see the lines lining up there. Here's our 2D projection, all right? And we can see that below the hemisphere, it goes more towards the north. It's gonna curve like this, all right, kind of around the bowl. So if we were drawing this on our paper, Right? Ooh, where'd my paper go? Yeah. Above the horizon, it would kind of loop around like this, we saw. And then below the horizon, it would kind of come around like that. Right? Right. And now we can think about uh, the same kind of thing uh, for our, for like the Southern Hemisphere. All right, so if here's our uh, North Celestial Pole, almost exactly opposite it, well, not almost exactly, exactly opposite it is gonna be the South Celestial Pole right about here, right? And we can kind of see there's a line, we can draw a line straight through from here 
down into our north celestial pole, right? Because that's that line, that's the line, that's the axis that Earth is rotating on, right? That's why all of the stars seem to rotate about it because that's where Earth's rotating about, right? Kind of like that weird shape there. <laughs> so it's really just a bunch of concentric circles around that, um, that line. So we have a North Celestial Pole and a South Celestial Pole. But we'll never get to see this South Celestial Pole in uh, Syracuse, because again, here's our above the horizon. We have our, we have Polaris here. Polaris doesn't really move. The South Celestial Pole doesn't really move in relation to how we see it all as to what's above and below the horizon. So it's never gonna move above our horizon so that we can see it, right? Now, we can travel around the world a little bit again, right? We were talking about how someone close to the North Pole would see Polaris near close to the zenith, right? That comes back to what we were saying about that's the point, that's the axis that Earth is rotating around, right? So if it's rotating like this, here's our North Pole. To see Polaris, they have to look in the direction that Earth is rotating around. That's for them is straight up. Oop, I erased North again. All right, because if Earth is rotating like this, right, if I say that this is that axis, you can say kind of like, we use it like a globe where it's kind of tilted. Our North Pole's up here. That's gonna be where Polaris is for someone near the North Pole or uh, in Alaska, I suppose is what we said. We said it would be close to the zenith for someone in Alaska, right? And then we said again, near the equator, it would be close to the horizon. Because again, if Earth is rotating like this, we have someone on the equator, or Earth, or in this case, Earth is rotating like this, right? Because someone in the equator's sky is like this. So it's rotating around. Here's North and South. Rotating kind of like this with my half of a globe. With our equator, our horizon is, again, still the rim of this bowl. So if Polaris is to the north, it's just gonna be straight off the horizon. All right. And then in the southern hemisphere, they don't see the south, the north celestial pole because they see the south celestial pole. All right. So that's really a lot of what we've been talking about for this lecture was where is Polaris? If we can place Polaris, Really our goals is placing Polaris based on where we are in the world, and then drawing the map of a star based on its rotation around Polaris. All right, well, I hope you found this little uh, visual thing at least a little bit helpful. Uh, let me know if you have any more questions, uh, and I will do my best to try to explain them uh, because I guess Sydney explains stuff. <laughs>